want to do a drawing, you grab a lead pencil and just start drawing. But of course, it wasn't always easy. Hundreds of years ago, they didn't have these lead pencils. All they had to do with their drawings with were things like goose quills and silver point. And their drawings were very beautiful. They used inks that wouldn't fade, often made out of rust or walnut shells. And they used silver point, which was, in fact, as the name suggests, the point of a piece of silver. The trouble is, if you use silver point, and here it is, here's a little sliver of silver cut to a point and uh, softened into a flame, and you use it on ordinary paper, it's so hard that it tends to rip the paper up. It doesn't leave much of a mark at all. So you have to treat the paper to make it tougher, and so tough that it'll rip little bits of silver off and make a mark. And the way they did that was to dress the paper, and they dressed it very often with ground bone. Now, bone is quite tough. It's hard and tough, but if you put it in a fire, it still remains as hard, but it becomes very brittle. You can break it. In fact, you can crush it. And the crushing was done in a mortar with a pestle. The bone was put in there, and some unfortunate little apprentice had to sit there for hours on end, grinding the bone until it was as fine a powder as he could achieve in these beautiful old brass mortars. Once that was done, the process was probably something like this. The ground bone was, first of all, sifted, not with a modern coffee sifter, but something similar, some kind of sieve, and that white powder was collected there. It's fairly coarse still, but it could be added to water with which some gum from a tree had been mixed to make a sort of gluey, sticky paste. And once the whole thing was prepared in this way, it was usually filtered again through a piece of cheesecloth. Now, I haven't got any cheesecloth, but a cotton, or a, a stocking, I should say, is the modern-day equivalent. So if I make a bag out of stocking and fill it up with that rough, bony paste, I should be able to squeeze it through and get a much finer bony paste. Here goes. In goes the, the mess. Bring another saucer in. Grind my bag up by twisting it, and you'll notice that that squeezes the bony dressing through the walls of the stocking. And that's going to be a very much finer bone dust than I got in the first place. Well, once that had been prepared, the paper could be brought in, and it was handmade paper and often very rough and absorbent. It wasn't very good for inks. The bone paste could be mixed up like this and painted onto the surface of the paper. You can see little granules in there. I really didn't sift it uh, finely enough, but you certainly get the idea. And once it was dressed all over, it was put aside and allowed to dry. And, of course, it had to dry flat, otherwise you had wrinkles in it. Once it had dried, it came out like this. I've got messy fingers, so I'll hold it on the corners. But that's the undressed paper side, and that's the dressed paper. A rougher finish, a beautiful, soft, whitey bone finish, and it's rather like a very fine abrasive sandpaper. So abrasive, in fact, that if we get our silver point and drag it across, you'll find it rips the bits of silver off very well and leaves a dark mark. And that, in fact, was how you made the silver point drawings. And silver point was simply one form of metal point. You notice it comes off black and not silver. That's so of all the metals used. Gold and copper were good. Here's copper going the other way. They all left a black mark. And that was very good for fine, delicate shadings. The trouble is that that metal changes over the years. Hundreds of years later, it's gone. And if you look at the drawings which have silver point today, when they were done hundreds of years ago, all you see is the ink until you hit them with ultraviolet light. Have another look. The ink is there, that hasn't faded, the metal has, but ultraviolet light brings it up. And that's a very powerful technique because a drawing which means almost nothing to us can, under ultraviolet light, show us exactly what the original artist had in his silver point. Well, there was one metal that, in fact, was soft enough to leave a mark on its own, and that was lead. And if you draw that across ordinary paper, it leaves quite a decent mark. The trouble is the point is so soft, it's very hard to control. So. We were all very well supplied when uh, somebody came along and substituted for the lead the black carbon graphite that we know in today's pencils. And it still is known as the lead pencil.